Good evening all. Uh, now before I put the Muppet 2 system away, I thought I'd just do one uh, final experiment, which is to charge this supercapacitor bank. So this is um, six, or what are they? I think they're 120 farad capacitors in series. It's on one of these uh, boards which has the little protection circuits. So hopefully if I can get to uh, charge this supercapacitor right up to 16.2 volts, which is the maximum voltage across the string of six, we should see little blue LEDs come on. Those are the protection circuits. Now I've got this bulb in here. It's not really attached. It's just hanging in there. And I'm just using it to discharge the supercapacitors, which is a bit of a giveaway. Um, okay, I've got my power supply here. I'm gonna use it in current because I just want to monitor current. I have set a current limit of one amp, but I do not intend to hit that limit. Let's just take a look at the voltage on here. Uh, yes, 12.01 volts. That might dip a little bit because the light level that outside is going down. I'm just going to put that back into current if it'll do it. Yeah. And uh, when this finally gets down low, I'm going to attempt to charge this supercapacitor bank to 16.2 volts from a 12 volt power supply by doing a bit of buck first and then a bit of boost. Let's wait till this comes down. Now, of course, it takes ever longer for this thing to come down because, of course, as the voltage comes down, the bulb burns less power. So it takes longer and longer and longer. It's just classic um, capacitor exponential discharge. So while that's still coming down, let's take a quick look at the code. This is it. Uh, it's just four lines. This is the setup. Now, I've made a change there. That's A2. Uh, B2 gives me complementary outputs, which I wanted uh, for my synchronous buck, but I don't want them for this. I want them to be both the same uh, phase. Yes, I mean, it's not essentially, I could do it the wrong way around, but anyway, I've set them to the same phase. Um, I've got two constraints in here. I don't actually need the uh, constraint for pot one. This line here is effectively just OCR1A equals pot one. The constraints in there just um, because it was in there before, but pot one can go uh, between 0 and 1FF because it's simply an analog read divided by 2. This one, pot 2, is constrained. It's constrained between 0 and 0FF. Zero and that's because I don't want the boost converter to go too crazy. I constrained it like I did in the last video. Right, that's probably enough. Let's take that off. Um, that looks like it's about just over 2.5 volts approaching three volts that's fine we can start there um okay so this pot on the left here is the one that's controlling the um mosfet up here which is the switch in the buck circuit uh, this second pot is controlling the other mosfet driver which is this mosfet here which is the switch vertically here in the boost circuit so what i'm going to do is do a bit of buck first and then switch over to boosts so let's give it a try now I raise this up and you can see here on the MOSFET driver that the little light comes on but we're not drawing any current and that's because we're at a level where the buck converter is producing a voltage sort of here after the um, inductor and in the load which is kind of here um, that is lower than the current voltage on the supercapacitor bank so nothing will happen until I kind of bring this up to a point where we're getting close to the voltage of the capacitor bank. Now I'm starting to draw some current. Let's keep raising this up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up and you don't have to turn it much until we get to about half an amp. So there is half an amp, 500 milliamps. Now of course it immediately drops away and you can see that the voltage on the capacitor bank is now creeping up. So I actually have to keep turning this. I'll try and get the light on the uh, slot there. I have to keep turning this quite gingerly. I can't go mad to maintain the current. Now I have set a, a, a current limit on this power supply of one amp, but I don't want to get anywhere near that because I want to show that actually I can control current by controlling the movement of this pot. I'm just inching it up more and more and more. Let's give it a bit more current actually. Let's go over 500 get up more towards 600 because then it's going to charge quicker. So we're now up to about six volts. I need to keep increasing this to maintain that current. 
if I just let go, the current just drops away. And that makes sense because this supercapacitor bank is charging more and more and more, and it's requiring less and less current to uh, take its voltage up. So let's give it a bit more, bring that current back up into the 500 or 600 milliamp range. Still haven't hit current limit on this power supply, and I absolutely intend not to. And that's because this power supply could be another supercapacitor bank, or it could be a lead acid battery, just giving a constant 12 volts. Oh, I just wound it up a little bit uh, aggressively there and took it up to 600 milliamps, but I'm staying within my uh, bounds of one amp. I'm not gonna go anywhere near one amp. So I'm inching this up more and more and more. This is actually getting close now to the pot being at full position. Let's just take that up a little bit just to get a bit more current and take this up a bit quicker. I don't want to be accused of uh, asking you to watch paint dry, even though I love it. Let's take that up a little bit more. The pot, as you can see from the slot there, once it gets around to that angle, it's pretty much done. Give it 600 milliamps. Not gonna hit the current limit on the power supply. We're up to 10 volts. Now, because we've got a diode here, which is part of actually the boost circuit, but it also works as an anti-backfeed diode. This supercapacitor cannot discharge back into all this lot because of that shock key diode. My, I've let my current drift down, haven't I? Let's take that up. Oh, I think I'm done. Yeah, I'm absolutely at the top of that pot's travel now. The light has moved completely over to this uh, left-hand side. The current is dropping down. We're up to about 11 volts. Remember, this is 12 volts. There is a bit of a volt drop in the Schottky diode and these polyfuses. I managed to find a 1.6 amp polyfuse there, that square one. So I've put that in. Right, so we're now at, I don't know, 11 and a half volts. Um, the buck side of things is not gonna be able to take that any higher because it can only produce voltages uh, lower than the incoming power supply. This is a 12, this is set to 12 volts. And in fact, coming into this power supply, from my solar system there's only 12.9 so there's there's no way i've got enough voltage coming into this power supply and from this power supply to take this up to 16 volts so now i'm gonna have to start boosting so i'm gonna have to start getting this one to just come off its edge there like that just get that second led to come on that starts pulse width modulating this mosfet starts pulsing this switch let's turn this try and show that to get some current on here so there's 500 milliamps and now using boost so this uh, MOSFET is now permanently on it's fully on this is acting like a piece of wire we're just running current straight through here but now I'm boosting and I've got to keep turning the pot to maintain that current I'm boosting the voltage here to take this beyond the 12 volts that this power supply is supplying this hasn't changed this has been 12 volts all along all i'm doing is watching this to make sure i don't overdo the current let's take it a bit higher actually to accelerate the process a bit let's go up to about 700 milliamps i'm just nudging this round oh there we are 730 and now you can see that we're clearly well above the 12 volt uh, range let's take that a little bit more keep that current nice and high but i'm not going to hit that one amp current limit because I want to pretend this is some really low impedance um, power source, uh, like a battery or another supercapacitor. Now, if this were another supercapacitor, of course, its voltage would be going down as this one would be coming up. Let's try and maintain that current at about 600 milliamps. Right, we're now at, oh, what's that, 14 volts. I'm just going to wind that up a little bit. I'm just going to move ahead a little bit get that current nice and high up to about 800 milliamps i want to push this up because these blue lights are not going to come on until this supercapacitor bank reaches 16.2 volts let's just keep easing this around it's tiny movements it's like flying an airplane small movements they shout at you when you're diving <laughs> barrel rolling um okay so let's just keep that nice and high we're over 15 volts, not much over 15 volts, but over 15 volts. Just take that a little bit higher, nudge this up a bit more. 700 milliamps. 
uh, as I say, this should start coming on. I've done this a few times already, so I've kind of balanced these capacitors out. So the blue lights should all start coming on around the same time. I've let that, I'm not turning this, I've let that drop a little bit. Let's push that back up. 700 milliamps. Uh, okay, this is just under 16. Let's keep that nice and high, otherwise this, this is going to take all night. Let's turn the pot, get it up to seven in excess of 700 milliamps. Ah, right, that is over 16 volts. We should start seeing some lights come on soon. Let's just keep nudging that forwards. I'm getting, I'm approaching the halfway point actually. If that slot were vertical and I've constrained at that point, so it wouldn't go any higher. Blue lights are starting to come on. This has hit 16.2 in excess of that actually. Uh, there's a blue light on at the back. You probably can't see that. Three lights on, four lights on. Let's keep a bit of current going into this. Five lights on. This capacitor is a lazy one. Always seems to come on last. Let's just wait until that one comes on. Just put, right, I've got all six lights on. I'm going to back this off, turn this down. The current drops away completely. These lights will start to go off because there's no current now coming from the power supply. Just wait until all these lights go off. Now, because this um, diode here, right, those have all gone off. Because this diode is acting as an anti-backfeed diode, once the lights go off, and remember that the lights, it's not just the LEDs drawing current, it turns on... Um, a MOSFET across these resistors so and they get quite warm so it, it really is drawing a lot of current down once those go off very little current is coming out of um, these capacitors so I'll now turn that right back nothing can back feed back through that diode so this is just going to sit there fully charged and I can now actually also completely back off and you can see the LEDs changing flipping over from uh, that way to that way completely back off the PWM on the Buck MOSFET. So now both MOSFETs are off, everything's disconnected, no current being drawn. My capacitors are fully charged. 16 volt capacitor bank charged from a 12 volt power supply using Muppet 2. Result, awesome. Cheerio.